Welcome to Let's Talk Learning Disabilities with Lori Peterson and Abby Weinstein. Lori and Abby spend their days talking about dyslexia, dysgraphia, dyscalculia, and ADHD. They talk to parents of struggling students and adults who have had a lifetime of academic challenges. They want to share those stories along with their own insights with you. So, let's talk learning disabilities. Welcome to our very first episode of Let's Talk Learning Disabilities. My name is Lori Peterson. And I'm Abby Weinstein. And we are so excited that you are here. So today is just going to be kind of an introductory um, episode. We'd like to give you some information about us and, and let you learn a little bit more about who we are and to then tell you a little bit more about what to expect from the podcast in the coming episode. So um, I'm going to let Abby start. Abby, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, well, first of all, I'm so happy to be here with you guys and Welcome, everybody. I am an educational diagnostician. Currently, it's about my 15th year as a diagnostician. However, I've been in education for about 25 years now in the classroom, in both special education settings and general education settings. So I have experiences to share regarding students that learn differently, typically developing students, and all sorts of challenges that go along with learning difficulties. What grades did you teach? I taught primarily first grade. All of my years were first grade, except one year I taught middle school, and that was an experience, and I decided to go back to elementary <laughs> after that. I don't, do middle, I don't really do the Those middle school age. Years. Those are some rough years. I like the young ones and really teaching them how to read and giving them that love of learning. And those little kids, they still they, they like you. Oh, they do. Right? They the still want to please you. I started to figure out that you don't know what you're doing. That's right. They little start to really be too like independent. Um, and so what made you decide you wanted to be a diagnostician? And first, I think let's go ahead, because not everybody that's listening to this is from the state of Texas. Let's explain what a diagnostician is. So diagnosticians, we are trained in administering standardized assessments, such as an intellectual assessment and academic achievement assessments. And we're trained in administering those tests interpreting the results and diagnosing learning disabilities. We're very similar to psychometrists in other states that don't have diagnosticians, and we do very similar evaluations to um, psychologists or school psychologists in the school setting. And so what made you decide you wanted to, to go down that road? Well, actually, when I moved from special education to general education, I was feeling a little run down and burnt out and feeling like I wasn't making enough progress with my students. So I thought, I'm going to go work with typical students in a regular classroom <laughs> and come to find out that even in a quote unquote regular classroom or a general education classroom, there are always students that struggle. Even if they're not diagnosed with any type of learning disability, there are struggling students or students that learn differently. And that made me want to learn more about kind of diving into why are students struggling. And I, that drove me to want to become a diagnostician and start my master's degree program and went through my master's in education and my got my certification as a diagnostician and then wanted to learn even more and really equip myself with more knowledge and skills in special education and learning disabilities. And so I went on and got my PhD in special education. That's awesome. That's a lot of school. It is a lot of school. You know, I kind of have a similar story. I was always special education. And interestingly, um, no one would ever believe this if you knew me, but I, I really knew what I wanted to do when I was in high school. Like I really loved working with kids and I really loved the kids that just needed that extra help. Like I volunteered through my school. Our high school program had this where I could go to a, an elementary school and I worked in their special education classroom as a high school student. Wow. So I always really knew that I wanted to work with these kids. And so my undergrad's in special ed as well. Um, and I um, taught for about seven or eight years. I loved it. I loved, I, wor I worked with all ages, all different learning differences, all different, you know, disabilities. Um, but I was like you, I'm like, but why? why? Why is this hard for you? Why don't you get this? And I just wanted to be able to crack open their head and, mm -hmm. and get inside. And so that's what motivated me to go back to. So I got my my certification as well. Um, interestingly, though, I worked in the schools for five or six years as a, as a diagnostician, but it, it quickly frustrated me because there's so much red tape and there's so many things that you're allowed to say and not allowed to say. And 
even allowed to test for or mm-hmm. how you do the testing. And I'm a very common sense kind of person. And so much of what we were doing just didn't make good common sense. And so that is when I started um, a private practice and started going. I went out on my own. And that was how many years ago? It was 16 years ago. Wow. Just over. Yeah. Or right at, right at 16. Um, and I love what I do. I love helping families understand why their student struggles. I love helping adults understand why something is hard for them and, and know that. And, and it's the hope. It's giving them hope, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, and that's how Abby and I met. You know, she came to work for us part time and then we sucked her in and we stole her away. And now she's been with us full time. And um, we love what we do. And I think that kind of leads us into the whole reason why we're doing this podcast is that, you know, we spend day in, day out talking to adults with learning differences or challenges, parents of students with learning struggles. And we find that we're hearing the same things or a lot of the same things over and over again. We find that when we're uh, meeting with families to go over those testing results that we're explaining and and having the same kinds of conversations. And I feel like um, we we are able to give that hope. And I've I would love to know that if there's someone that's listening to this that has a child with a learning difference or is an adult who's always struggled with reading or struggled with math, um, that there's hope. And I think our goal with this podcast is to inform Mm -hmm. um, and to educate, but to give hope. And, and to let you know that, you're A, you're not alone, because there's just nothing better than knowing that you're not alone, Absolutely. but also knowing that there's a, there's an answer, there's help, there's hope. And so that's kind of why we're here. So, Abby, tell us a little bit about what we're going to be talking about on these podcasts. Well, what to expect coming up in the future. We're going to focus on lots of different learning disabilities and other related topics. Um, for example, we're going to talk about dyslexia. We're going to talk about dysgraphia. We're going to spend a lot of time talking about ADHD or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. We're going to talk about a math disability called dyscalculia. Or, or dyscalculia. Dyscalculia. <laughs> That's right. Tomato, tomato. It's how you say it. And we're going to really focus in on defining the disability talking about characteristics and symptoms of those disabilities, what to look for, um, and then how can we go about correcting it and compensating and learning strategies to correct it, and what are the causes, what are the long-term implications or the prognosis in the future of these different disabilities. We're also going to talk about some other topics. Lori, what are some other topics we might talk about? So we're going to talk a lot about the disabilities, and and I like the long-term prognosis and what to expect at the different age levels, right? Because we see kids that are in kindergarten all the way up through. We've I think our last adult that we saw was 64 years old. So we we've seen it at every age, and we know that it looks a lot of these things look very different at every age. Some of them even look different between boys and girls. That's right. And so we want to talk about that. Um, we are going to talk a lot about what the 50, Section 504 law um, provides for students. Um, and what? how is that different than being in special education? We're going to talk about the types of help you can get while you're in college and how to access that support. We're going to talk about how to get support on things like um, the SAT and the ACT and on different licensing exams and certification exams and how individuals with disabilities can get accommodations or get help with those. Um, we're going to talk a lot about how to help parents be better advocates for their kids But even more importantly, we're going to talk about how to help students become their own best advocate because one day mom and dad won't be there to help the teacher remember that they need more time on their tests. And so they need to learn how to advocate for themselves. We're going to talk a lot about what are realistic expectations um, of the school, both private and public. What can a private school do? What are they expected to do? Um, And then we're going to talk about public schools and what, what is realistic to ask for because you can go in and you can ask for, you know, the moon, but you have to be prepared for them to say no. Um, And like Abby said, we will talk a lot about ADHD simply because we both live it. Um, We both have been diagnosed with ADHD. We both, um, I have children with ADHD. I have a husband with ADHD. So we have a lot of ADHD in this office. Mm -hmm. And um, we have some great experiences, not just with the kids that we've worked with and the adults we've worked with, but just in day-to-day stuff. So you'll probably see some of our ADHD coming through, like when we aren't very well organized or we haven't planned very well. Those executive functioning skills, you know, those are things we struggle with. Go off on a tangent. Exactly. We will get off topic very easily. Um, So we're hoping with all of that information, um, we'll be able to provide some hope and some um, valuable 
valuable um, knowledge mm-hmm. that you can take um, and decide if you need to either pursue testing um, for your child. That's one thing we didn't even talk about, private versus public testing, right. too. The That's testing right. you can get through the school versus the testing you can get privately and what's different about it. Yeah, that is um, something we need to tackle. And really, I mean, we want to make sure that you leave with some knowledge or some nugget of information that, that gives you hope, but this equips you to make more informed decisions regarding your student or you um, as far as moving forward. Treatments and things like that. And what you can do about it. Right. We're also hoping to have a couple guests, um, speakers, as we come through. We're going to do some interviews. I've got um, an ADHD coach lined up that we're going to talk to. That's always a good one. We're going to talk to a dyslexia therapist, an occupational therapist. We're going to have a special education teacher come in and talk. We're going to have a 504 coordinator come in and talk with us. Um, And then we're also maybe going to have, I'm most likely, almost positive, we'll have a vision therapist or somebody who deals with vision therapy, because that's something we actually see a lot of visual processing stuff. And we work pretty closely with those doctors and therapists, too. So hopefully that will add just even more um, to the pot of what we have to offer. So we're really excited and we're glad you're here. The one thing we did want to also let you know is that if you have something that you would like to hear more about, um, either you want to suggest a topic for the show or you just have questions or a question or lots of questions, um, we have an email. It's less, let's talk learning disabilities at gmail.com. So just shoot us an email and we're happy to answer any questions that you have, but also we'd love some suggestions about what you guys would like to hear because we want this to be for you. We want this to be helpful. So if there's something we can add or do differently or a topic that you feel like would be super helpful, then send it our way and we will definitely add it to our list. Mm -hmm. So expect our first episode to probably be out about the same time this one comes out. We're so excited. We're going to start with dyslexia and talk to you a little bit about that. That's going to be our first episode. Um, We probably won't be able to cover everything about dyslexia, but we're definitely going to do our very best to get it started. Right. We might circle back around to it again. Oh, I probably several times. (laughs) Right. It's so common. But again, please feel free to contact us or email us at let's talk learning disabilities at gmail.com. And you guys go have a great day. Have a great day. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for joining us today. In our show notes, you can find information about today's talk, as well as links to resources and other episodes. If you have questions about today's talk, have ideas for future episodes, or just want to stay connected, you can contact us through Diagnostic Learning Services on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram. So let's keep talking learning disabilities. This podcast is sponsored by eDiagnostic Learning. You can find more information at www.ediagnosticlearning.com.